everybody. I'm Stacy. And I'm Rodada Mickey. And welcome to Kitty Nomics! <laughs> Yay! It's another fun edition of Kitty Nomics. We are so happy to have everybody here on this. Well, we're in Canada, so it is like freezing today. <laughs> it is very cold today. So thank you, thank you for joining us on our Kids Financial Literacy Friday. So we have another special guest for you today. We have our returning Miss Billy Jane, and we're gonna talk about how to fund your passions. This is like gonna be such an amazing topic. I'm so excited to have her back because we just love her here on Kittynomics. But before, we get started. Yes, happy Chinese New Year, said Madeline. Good job. I love that. Yay. Hang on. Let me share my screen. <laughs> One second. All righty. Everybody can see my screen. All right. Thank you, everybody, again for joining Kittynomics. We'd like to thank all of the new kitties that have registered this week. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Welcome. All of the kitties will, if you say that this is your first time, they'll welcome you in the chat and, uh, and uh, make you feel warm and fuzzy. And of course, thank you to all of our returning kitties that are here week after week with us on Kittynomics. We love you for being here. So I'm just going to get into a few housekeeping items and tell you why or what Kittynomics is all about, right? What's Kittynomics all about? We're going to tell you. So Kittynomics is here to help kids ages eight plus to develop a healthy relationship towards financial literacy, helping to start kids off on the right path to have a successful financial future. That's what we want for you. That's what I want for you. <laughs> that's what she wants for me. And that's what I want for everybody out there, especially you kitties as you grow older you'll be able to make healthy choices and decisions that will positively affect you in the long run to have a successful financial future, okay? So just some housekeeping items, which is really quick. We cannot see or hear any of our attendees, so any of you kitties, so we can't see or hear you. However, you do communicate with us through the chat box down below or up above or to the right, I don't know. Um, but you will communicate with us through the chat box. So in the chat box, we do like to maintain a very safe community here on Kittynomics. So we ask all the kitties to please never share how old you are, like where you live, no personal information about you. I don't want to see any email addresses, no phone numbers, nothing like that in the chat box, please. Because if you remember, we did have the um, online money smarts with Miss Hadriana Leo, and we did talk about um, how to maintain privacy online and why is it so important, right? So please never share any of that stuff in the chat box. Um, and also, I know everybody loves to chat in the chat box because you know you guys have been on Kitty Nomics for quite some time. It's so fun. it's fun, right? Like you guys, you guys do have a lot of conversations going. Just remember sometimes that I will be in the chat box. I always monitor it. And so if you see me right, so if you see my name, Stacy Brown, if you see me right, okay, let's focus on the expert. I like to just simmer down some of the chat, okay? And then, of course, if you do have a question, you can raise your hand, but you have to type your question in the chat box, okay? Otherwise, I don't know what your question is. And so to remind everybody, we do always record every Kittynomics webinar. So yes, it's being recorded now. And I record it and then put it up on our YouTube channel, on Kittynomics YouTube channel. And it will be posted today by 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So you will see the video up. So you can always watch it back in case you missed anything or you didn't, uh, you came in a little bit late today. You can watch this, this webinar back and all of our other webinars that we have had um, over the long while that we've been hosting Kitty Domics, okay? All righty. Let's jump into Miss Billy Jane. Yay. I just love her name, Billy Jane. <laughs> <laughs> I always think of the Michael Jackson song. <laughs> of course. <laughs> so Ms. Jane Bolton Rojo is a financial expert 
specialists, sorry, helping individuals, families, and business, business owners build a financial legacy. Her pillars involve creating a knowledge legacy with the gift of education and RESPs protecting legacy with personal insurance and enhancing business legacy with strategic insurance solutions. She is a mom of, of three and uh, of three awesome kids helping to teach them financial literacy skills. So let's give a big round of applause. Right, our big kitty nomics, welcome to Miss Billy J. <laughs> All right, <laughs> stop sharing my screen here and I'm gonna jump into the chat just before okay. we start. If any of the kids have any questions before we get started. Okay. Uh, saying hello, hello, hello. Hi, hello, everybody. everyone. So let me share my screen. Share screen. Yes. Okay. Can you see my screen? Yes, we can. See awesome. It. Awesome. So we're going to talk today about funding your purpose, funding your passion. And this is just for kids. I cannot wait to be sharing this information with you. So let's keep it moving. All right. So first, we're going to talk about a few things. When we're done, you're going to be experts on knowing the different kinds of schools that can help you step out in your purpose when you're all grown up. We're going to talk about the RESP and how mom and dad can help plan ahead for your purpose. And also how the government can help mom and dad through the RESP in preparing for your purpose. And finally, what other ways you can fund your purpose. So this is going to be so much fun. So let's talk purpose. What is purpose? Okay, what is it? What do you think it is, Michaela? What is Mickey, purpose? what do you think it is? The reason for which something is done or created for something existing. <laughs> yes, as you read it, yes. <laughs> It is something that is done or created or it's the reason why something is here, right? And for you, your purpose is the reason why you were created and you were created for a very special and unique purpose. Now, so many kids are like, well, I don't know. How do I know what my purpose is? I'm, I'm just a kid. I don't know. Well, here are a couple of clues to think about it. So first, Think about your passion. What is your passion? That's the things you love to do, okay? But then also think about your gifts because oh, you know, when you came to this amazing earth that we're on, you came all wrapped up with gifts inside. You're present to the world, okay? So think about the things that you love to do and not just video games, okay? <laughs> but things you love to do and the gifts that you have because that all helps you understand your purpose. So today, I want you to be bold as you think about your purpose. I don't want you to be shy. We can brag about what our passions are, what our gifts are, okay? Because they were given to you for a reason and for you alone and why? so you can change the world, okay? So during this talk, I want you to think about your purpose. We're gonna talk about a whole bunch of things, but as we learn about how you fund your purpose, we wanna think about what your own purpose is. Hands up, yeah. So Mustafa says he will make robots that can help solve many world problems. I love oh. that Mustafa, what? that is big purpose, yes! And look that. how bold he was to share right. that with us. I love it. He stated it. He knows exactly what he's going to do and he knows the impact that he's going to have. Like, I like, what? You, Mustafa. I love that. What? Cheryl says, everyone says, I'm great at drawing, especially for her age. So, awesome. That's awesome. Yes. Yeah. Yes. You're a little artist. Let's hear Mickey. Let's hear. Mickey says, what? What do you say, Mickey? I'm good at making food. She's good at making forts, which is awesome. But forts, hey, you're a builder. Yes. Hey, what does that mean? Who knows what you could be using that gift of building forts? You can maybe be an architect or something. 
Right? That's cool. You're a builder. I love it. I love it. So think about the things you love to do. Think about what your gifts are. Okay. But we are in Black History Month. So if you can pause and, and let's celebrate some really awesome things as we think about Black History Month. Now, I'm going to tell you a little bit about me. You already know that I'm a mom. I have three kids. But you know, my family is not from Canada. This is where we are doing this whole presentation. I'm at my family's actually from a country called Ghana. It's in West Africa. So I showed you here the big map of Africa. It's a continent that's many, many countries. And you see that little circle over there? That's where Ghana is in West Africa. Okay. And you know that a lot of people, when you see a lot of people that look like me, a lot of people with, you know, more compl deeper complected people of African descent, a lot of them came from West Africa. Africa and Ghana is one of the countries. So if we look closer, look here, this is what Ghana looks like. And it's got a whole bunch of different regions that they separated. And you got to know the Ghanaian flag. So if you're into soccer, and you see people waving the flag and they're seeing the black stars, you know, it's Ghana. Okay, so just something to teach you a bit about some get something related to Ghana. Now, I want to take a moment and share with you some Ghanaians who are living in their purpose. Remember, I love Mustafa. You're going to be building robotics and stuff like that. Everyone in this call, think about your purpose and also keep dreaming as you look at how other people step into their purpose and how they change history. And we're going to talk as part of Black History Month about some Ghanaians. So I want to introduce you to some athletes. I've got Mr. Asamo Giam. He is a football player. Doesn't he look like a football player? He plays in Europe. I've got this beautiful woman, Akuswa Serwa. She is an Olympian. She's a sprinter. I got some actors here. I've got this actor, her beautiful Freema Ajaman. She actually lives in England and she is in a show called Doctor Who. Okay. Who about, who recognizes Mr. Boris Kajo? He is also, yes, he is also Ghanaian and Idris Al. He's also Ghanaian. Okay, let's celebrate. Let's celebrate where we all come from. Let's talk about some professionals. Oh, look at this young man here in the top corner. He is Dr. Theo Nyame. He is a plastic surgeon and you can see he was noted as the top 2020 doctor. Isn't that amazing? This gentleman here on the right, Mr. Daniel Wubwa. He is the president of a university in Pennsylvania. Isn't that cool? And then look at this beautiful woman. Her name is Elsie Ousu. She lives in England and Mickey, you need to watch her. She's an architect. So you can see what she's built here. Okay. Start dreaming guys. Start dreaming. We've got artists. I heard who was on the, who just shared that she loves drawing. We've got some artists here. Yes, I Layla says that she loves drawing and then yes, another person that said that they love drawing too. I love it. So you can see some gentlemen here. They are artists. We've got um, his name is this one gentleman on the left is was Wiz Kudua. And he's you can see he does lots and lots of paintings. This gentleman is Osuankoma, and he's in Germany and he loves to paint murals, walls of paint pictures. And you see all these little symbols? They are special Ghanaian symbols called Adinkran symbols, and they've got special meanings. And he will put pictures of people using those images. It's amazing. And then we've got beautiful, beautiful here, AC. Agdua, she is an author and she won the 2018 Scotiabank um, Giller Prize. Isn't that amazing? And over here, we've got Miss Catherine Ade. She's a business owner. She owns her own, so I'm not, she's a fashion designer. So she's got her own like beauty store and stuff like that. Isn't that amazing? Okay. So now you see some artists. Yes. Hand up. So Madeline would like to know what are murals? And oh, Melma would like to know what do all those figures stand for? 
Good question. So let yeah. me see if I can go back. All right, mural is a painting, a huge painting that you would put on a wall. Normally you paint, like you see this gentleman here, Mr. Wiz, he's got paintings on a canvas. Well, if you do a mural, your wall is your canvas. And Adinkra symbols are symbols that mean a lot within the Ghanaian culture that have, it has a special meaning. Like some of them could be talking about purpose or about God and things like that. So they've got different meanings meanings in there. I don't even know how many symbols there are. So thank you for asking that question. I'm now going to have to ask my mom how many symbols there are. But these symbols, he took these different symbols. You see some of them like these. There's this man looking one. These symbols have different meanings and he'll put them together in a mural and does amazing creative art. So good question. I love the engagement. I like to share public servants. We are talking about these two gentlemen. His name is on the left, Adam our three, I have a hard time pronouncing names because guys, I have to tell you, I am still working on my skills. He is a politician and he's a multimillionaire. Who wants to be a multimillionaire in the chat, okay? He's a business owner, okay? And this gentleman, oh my goodness, his name is Lord Paul Boating. Who wants to be a Lord? He's in the House of Lords in England. Isn't that amazing? Okay, so no, you can strive big. Now I wanna share with you a couple of kids of Ghanaian descent who are doing some amazing things. I'm going to share with you on the left, Miss Anaya Akoswa. She is 11 years old and she's got her own business called Colette Anaya. And she's in the mission to advocate the importance of savings between children and adults. So this is really cool idea. So she's here starting her own business. And to the right here is another little guy, Mateo. And I have to admit, he's my little guy. He loves art. That's one of his pictures that he drew of Nelson Mandela. So know that you guys have a purpose and I want you to step out in your purpose. So I want you to do some dreaming, okay? I want you dreaming about what's out there. I've heard already so many awesome ideas about what your purpose is, what you wanna do. I heard from Mustafa. Who else wants to share some ideas? Share, and I remember I said, we're gonna be bold. We're not going to be shy. We're going to talk about our gifts, what we love. Let's hear it in the chat. I want to see who else is an artist. Who wants to be a doctor? Who wants to be an electrician? Yes, paramedic. Oops, Who sorry. Let's go back. I want to hear it in the chat. So Valerie wants to be a neurologist, which is wow. amazing. I Good love that. Um, I'm going back. So Thomas, <laughs> I think Thomas. Are you saying football or soccer? Maybe you want to be a football or soccer player? Yeah, I guess it depends, um, right? Because in Europe, they call them football. They call it football. Right, exactly. In the States, I guess, African football. So yeah, okay. I mean, African, American football. Okay, uh, yeah. Nelma will be able... Uh, hold on. Sorry, let me go sure. I will go down. <laughs> um, uh, Jenna says she wants to be a doctor. Oh, and I love it. You can do it, Jenna. Share no joy, joy. What is it that you want to be? Oh, EB says uh, she wants to be a trauma surgeon or an anesthesiologist. Oh, look at all of these doctors in the house, right? Madeline says she wants to be a YouTuber. Okay, you want to be a YouTuber, an influencer? Okay, yes, yeah. We have Mahalia wants to be an electrician. Okay, I had that on my list, didn't I? Which is amazing. Nicholas wants to be a very good bat. So he's very good at basketball. So I think he wants to be a, a basketball player. I love it. Let's celebrate all of it. Ooh, Courtney wants to be a chef. Oh. Ava wants to be an electrician too. Yes. Uh, Ibi wants to be a engineer. Okay. So we have like a vast amount of all things. That I love it. I love it. And you know what? You guys are going to do it. You are going to do it. You are going to be all of those things. Mickey, you had your hand up. Were you going to add something more about your gifts or what you want to be when you grew up? A basketball player, a tennis player, and a volleyball player. A basketball player, a tennis player, and a what? A volleyball, volleyball player. player. 
So you are an all around athlete. I don't think we could do all of those things at the same time, but I love it. And listen, guys, I want you to, as you think about your future, I'm going to show you how you can, how your future, you can step out into that. But for all those things that you want to do, okay, you like, you said that you want to be a doctor. I heard so many doctors, neurologists, anesthesiologists, engineers, electricians, architects, you know, artists, ball players. I don't care what it is that you want to do. You're going to have to work at it. You're going to have to step out in excellence. How are we going to do that? We need to get skilled. And for a lot of the things that we want to do, we'll need to pursue post-secondary. It may, we might need to go to university. For instance, our people who want to be doctors, you have to go to university. Some may need to just go to a college. Like if you want to be an electrician, you don't have to go to university. You can go to college, right? If somebody, let's say, wants to be uh, a, um, a plumber, they can go to trade school, okay? All of these things are amazing and we need all all of it. And that is what helps us and helps our whole society to run. This is how you change the world. Step out in your gift in greatness. So what I'm showing here is, oh my goodness, how much does school cost? Okay. It varies on the kind of school. Now, I don't want you guys to worry about the money. I just like you guys to have an awareness about cost because you guys have already been learning so much about savings and about, you know, buying real estate and buying investments. So you are starting to get an awareness about money. Money. So let's talk about it. Trade schools. Yes. Hands up. Yes. Yeah, sorry to interrupt you, Miss Billy Jane. Can you, the kids have raised their hands in the chat, Valerie and who else? There's somebody else. Can you guys just type your questions in the chat box? So we can <laughs> it is, okay. All right. Okay. Awesome. Sorry about awesome. That. All right. So let's talk about it. Like if you want to go to trade school, for instance, you want to be a plumber or even an electrician, you can go to, I believe you can go to trade school for that as well. It costs about $1,400 for trade school. Now, if you want to go to college, it costs a little bit more and it usually takes a bit more time, $4,500 to $8,200, depends on what you want to be. Okay. If you want to go to university, we're looking at about $11,000 for one year. And if you want to go for four years, it could be around $48,000 if you want to be somewhere close. So, you know, it's what is this here? Oh, they're saying in, so in, in about, let's say nine years from now, it's going to go up the cost of university, $14,000. And that's $60,000 for four years. So all you doctors on the line, that's what we're going to be preparing for. Okay. But don't you sweat it. I'm going to show you how we're going to make this happen. Okay. Now, why are these things so expensive? Because we got to play for the program. We call this tuition. Okay. For you guys to get skilled and to know what you're, what, to, how to be the best you can be in your purpose. There's costs. There's really cool things like student services. They've got like, you know, different places where kids can hang out at school and stuff like that, but you got to pay for it. You know, that some schools even have hospitals. Sometimes you will hear like on TV, they'll be saying, oh, university hospital, that's hospitals at universities. All of these things cost money. Okay. Books. We cannot learn without books. Your books cost money and transportation. You might have to get to and from school. That'll cost money. Personal care. Don't you want to have a cell phone? Don't you want to go out with your friends? All those things cost money while you're at school. Okay. So you see, you know, these guys, they are hanging out at the theater. All these things cost money. So, but are you thinking about flying away from the nest? Meaning going away to school? You get to live in residence. Look at this. Look at these people who are away to school and they get to hang out with more friends and have some independence it's really cool but it costs money because you know why you got to live there so you got to pay to live there and you got to eat so you got to pay for food so it can cost a bit when we go away from school but again we're not going to sweat it okay because i'm going to show you how we're going to make this happen okay So this is, so I just went through some of the things that we need that we're going to have to pay for, right? Where we live and eating. That's what makes going away to school a bit more expensive. Now, why is it important? Okay. Our world is changing. I heard somebody talking about wanting to do robotics. Okay. Wanting to build robots. This is where our world is going. There's something called 3D printing. So we need to be ready for that. Okay. 
and also jobs, all right? There are jobs that are needed, all right? So how do we get ready for school, okay? We gotta pay for it, okay? Then we can pay, we can have a school pay for it. We can have a job. We can have, stu we don't really like too much of these, but student loans, okay? They can all help to pay for school. But what is the best way Mom and dad can plan ahead with our ESPs, okay? They can help to save for education, which is super awesome, okay? So they can pay for education and the government will help to pay. All right, look, he loves it. This kid loves it. We've got three programs called the Canada Education Savings Grant. We've got additional Canada Education Savings Grant and we've got the Canada Learning Bond and some provincial grants. So I'm gonna explain how that works. All right, so for the Canada Education Savings Grant, there's a 20% bonus from the government. So the first $2,500 your parents put aside, you can get $500 from the government. Altogether, the government will give $7,200 if your parents are saving over time, okay? So this is awesome. We like to get money. It takes about 14 and a half years to get all of it if your parents are super fast, but they can take their time and spread it out while you're still in school, okay? But this is a great program, all right? <laughs> Unable to earn all of it at the same time? No worries, because your parents can also catch up in future years, okay? That's what this is really talking about. So I like to show some examples. By catching up in future years, your parents can double up. So in the first year, if in the first year, if your parents save everything, then for $500 of grant that your parents have and the rest, and then you don't have anything carrying over. And the next year you have another $500 that your parents can get by putting some money aside. They can do this over 14 and a half years and you can see that they will get all the money. You see here in this last line where it says $0 left here and you would have gotten all $7,200. It takes 14 and a half years to do it, okay? But we can also, if we don't, if our parents don't do it right away, they can catch up in future years, but we're going to play a game to show the difference of starting early and saving a little bit over time versus waiting. Yes, yes, hands up. So uh, Nelma would like to know, is RESP similar to a loan and what the other, other, what's the difference than the government paying for it? Okay, so an RESP is not a loan. An RESP is a registered education savings plan where you save, where your parents save for your education, okay? But what is so cool is that when your parents save, the government says, I'll help you save too. So they will top it up. All right, so there's extra money, there's your parents' money, and then there's extra government money that can all be used to help you to go to school. All right, so that's what it is. It is not a loan, it is savings, but the government helps to save too, okay? So we are the first group that is starting early and we start saving $2,500 a year and we earn our grant every year, okay? That's what one group is, does. Our second group, and we're not, you know what, I'm just really illustrating with this, with our second group, they don't do anything, but the government always keeps puts the money aside. So in the second group, they didn't do anything for the first seven years, but the grants kept accumulating. Do you see that? There was remaining grant of 500, then 1,000, and so on and so forth. All the way up to year nine, there's 4,500 waiting to be used. So let's say mom and dad start now when we're 10 and they start saving. They can get some of that money. They can double up and they can, if they double up, they put in 5,000, they double up their grant, they get 1,000. So they get some of that. So now there's 4,000 left. The next year, they do the same thing, okay? And they keep doing this every year to get as much as they can. But you notice in year 15, there's still leftover money. So they're not able to get all of it. So it's so important for mom and dad to start as soon as they can, so they can get as much government money as possible. Yes, hands up. So uh, maybe if you want to go back to either side, because I'm going to read a couple of questions. Sure. Um, Nicholas wants to know, do you have to open up one of these and where can you do that? Such right? a good question. And um, Madeline wants to know, why would you start at year one? 
You start as soon as you're born. <laughs> if your parents can, if they can start as soon as you're born, that's great. Or just start as soon as the as soon as possible. When I say year one, I really mean your age one. Okay, so that's what I should have put age one. So good catch there. Good catch. We we maybe there's another engineer on the line. Very detail oriented. I love it. Now, what was uh, was it Thomas's first question? Uh, Nicholas. 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 Sorry. No, where? Do you have well where questions? where can you okay you can go to a couple of places and I'm going to mention it later on in the slide but let's talk about it real quick here and then we'll skip over that slide. You can go to a okay, bank. Sorry, one more question. Yes. Uh, Renata wants to know is this Canada is this only for Canada. I forgot ah, to know all this week. Very good question for people who are not from I'll Canada. Yes, so let's I'll first address well. Nicholas' question, then we're going to address the other one. So Nicholas, you, your parents can go to a whole bunch of places to open an RESP. You can go to a bank. You can have a financial advisor. Financial advisor is a professional who can teach you how to teach your parents how to save, and they'll work with them. You can go to an insurance company, and there are companies called RESP companies where that's all they do, just RESPs. So your parents can go and open an RESP to any of those places okay now as for the resp it is for canadians it is a program here in canada so for those of uh, the kids who are here from other from around the world this program unfortunately is not available where you are however your country may have its own kind of an education savings program to help parents to save for kids i know in the u.s they have a program i don't know the name i know there are lots of like there's the 401k and this <laughs> I don't know all of the terms in the States. That one is more like retirement savings. I'm sure they have something for education. So it would be cool for your parents, encourage your parents to, to, to take a look to see if, you, if, if your country offers something like this, okay? So yes, should I go back to this slide? Yeah, no, that's okay. Uh, okay. Nicholas has a follow-up question. Yes. You no, know, do you start getting your grants when you open it? And Jenna would like to know, so if your parents start late and don't save enough money, you won't be able to go to college or university. So that is not uh, that is not fully true um, because there are going to be other ways that you can top up. Now, the thing is, um, in terms of starting early, it just helps you to get as much grant as possible. OK, if your parents start a bit later and, you know, everyone's circumstances are different. If we start a bit later, it's just that we may not be able to get all the grant, but that's OK. They've been saving their money and then whatever grant money they're able to get all that together is going to make such a huge difference and then we're going to talk about some other strategies to help you to also fill the gap okay so there's and you know what there's even more money okay i mentioned the 500 dollars, and your parents can double up to get a thousand dollars if there is some leftover but there's another program where your parents can get an extra 50 or 100 dollars, which is really cool okay so that one is dependent on income all right but that's something your parents can also find out about there's also something called a canada learning bond which i like to call is gift money your parents don't need to save for this depending on income you can your parents can qualify you to get this extra money okay you see she loves the sound of that okay so all your parents need to do is they need to apply and maybe they can get this extra money for you based on income all right so you can get quite a lot of money now now, there's also different provinces. Now we have people who may be on this who are not from Ontario. They could be from BC. BC also offers more money, $1,200 for kids between age six and nine. In Quebec, they offer some extra money, an extra 200 to 25, sorry, an extra 250 to an extra $500, okay, that they can get, which is really awesome. So, you know, this is, there's some money for the different places in, in Canada, okay? So I'm just going to speed ahead from this. Go ahead. We had a, you have a question. Yes, we just wanted to know. Joy wanted to know what exactly is a grant? A grant is money from the government. So your family will save and then the government will top it up with some money. And the money the government gives, we call a grant. 
Okay. And it is just money. You don't have to pay it back. It, you just have to go to school and you get to use that money. All right. And whatever school you want to go to, because remember, we talked about all the great purpose that we had. This is an example just showing you that just saving $100 a month for a little baby who is so happy like this, how much it can grow to. That amount can pay for half your school, which is super amazing. Okay. I'm not even going to bother to talk about this. Okay, what happens? Oh, when you go to school, what happens is that the money that your parents save, they get it. Your parents get that money to help you to send to send you to go to school, send you to school. They don't pay taxes on it. And all the rest of the money. Remember, I talked about the money from the government. That's why we got the government, but got the government building here. The government gives um, the government is also getting interest, and so is your parents, and that goes to you but it's taxable. But you know why it doesn't, it, it, it's not so important because you're going to school. You won't be making much money. So you can pretty much get this money, no tax, which is super awesome. So here are the different kinds of school that you can go to university, college, trade schools, technical schools, correspondence for people who want to do learning on the computer. You can do that correspondence or distance learning and something called CGIP, which is a program only in Quebec. And it's a program just before the kids go to university. So that's where you can use it to go to school, even part time studies. And can I tell you something else? Where else can you go to school here in Canada for sure? But you can also go abroad. That's why we got the airplane, okay? You can go to school anywhere around the world. So if you wanna go to the school in the States, you can. If you wanna go to school in Europe, you can. And you know what? I encourage you to consider your options because this is another way that you can help pay for school. There are over 3,800 schools. I see activity in the chat. Is there a question there? Yes, so there's a few questions. Okay, uh, I'm just gonna from, fast forward this. From Valerie. Yeah. She wants to know, does all the money you have when you're ready for school go to school fees? So I guess she wants to know, what can you use the money towards? Okay. And then there's a couple more. Awesome. Well, the money is yours. What is really cool is that whatever company your parents go to, they are not going to ask your parents for bills. They're just going to give your parents the money and you could use it on whatever you want. So if you can find other ways to pay for school, that extra money is yours. So don't worry about what you need to, about, you know, using it for something. But however, remember I talked to you about the different things that add up to the cost of schooling, like tuition, which is the cost for your courses. And I talked about books and all sorts of student services. Those are all the things that you need to pay for to go to school. And if your parents save some money through an RESP, you can use that money to help pay for it. Okay. And there's lots of time for you to use your RESP. You have 35 years to figure it out. Okay. And so you can use that. Okay. So I don't really want to spend much time on this one because I know that you guys are going to school. Yes. So Nicholas would like to know, since the cost of university or college will go up by the time we are ready, do you think more tactics will be made to save more money? How insightful are these kids? Like, what? Sorry, who was that? <laughs> what? That is a fabulous question. Because yes, school is going up. And so the thing is, one thing to keep in mind, what is so cool is when your parents are saving, it's not just their money. And you know what? It's not just the government money. Everything's invested. So it's growing to help keep up with the cost of education. So that's the first thing. But there are different ways that we can save for our future as well beyond the RESP. But we had a question. I'm just showing this slide about the different places that your parents can save for education. Okay. Now, the thing that we've talked a lot about our ESPs, um, I want to share some tips with you. We're just going to pause the slide here. I want to share some extra tips with you guys on how we can fill the gap. First thing, scholarships. Okay. What is a scholarship? A scholarship is when you get paid to go to school, wherever you want to go to school, they will pay you to go. So they will give you some free money just to go to their school. How do you get a scholarship? Study hard, have good marks, 
and a smart brain. So the better you do in school, that increases your chances. But it's not just that. You need to do other things, like have a business. That's cool. They love to know about you doing other things or volunteer or show other gifts. They love to know all of the things you love to do outside of school and schools will pay you money to go there. So take advantage of that. I heard some ballers on the call. Okay, our athletes, McKee, you're our little athlete, volleyball, tennis, okay? You can use your athletic gifts to get scholarships because schools will pay you to play sports with them, but you have to be a student first. Don't think you can just go to school and just play ball, okay? You've got to be a student first, but they will pay you to go to school if you are really good in sports. So take advantage of those gifts that are all wrapped up inside of you, okay? Remember, we talked about our little business owner. If you've got a little business and you can start from now, you've been learning on Kittynomics about so many cool ways to start a business and how to build your skills, that can all help you to save some money for school. Do you know what else is really cool? Yes, hands up. Yes, so I have one um, uh -huh. to know because she's asked a few times. So I was getting to you, Amiga, don't worry. Oh, sorry. <laughs> she wants to know, uh how does the government know who to send the grant money to oh very good question so when your parents open up an resp your parents attach your name to it okay so when your parents attach your name to it there is a special document that the government needs that it's that is for you alone it, ident it identifies you it's called a social insurance number and that number is unique to you and it's got just your name on it so when your parents open an resp they put your name and that special number and that's how the government knows it belongs to you OK, and so when it's time for you to go to school, your parents will let the government, let not the government know, they let the company know whether it's a bank or a financial advisor or an insurance company or an RESP company. They will let them know that you're ready for school and they show them here's proof that she's going to school and they will put the money in your parents bank account, including any grant monies that have been accumulated. Very good question. Yes. Sorry, there's a lot of questions. <laughs> Woo, I love it. I love, love, love. Okay, so I'm gonna read a few comments. Uh, okay. Ibrahim says, I'm really enjoying this and I will get my money. <laughs> <laughs> get yours. That's get what yours. I'm all about. <laughs> get <laughs> yours. Valerie says, I'm really happy that I joined and I've learned a lot and happy to learn more. Yay. Awesome. Yay. Love that. Okay, so then we have questions though. <laughs> okay, let's hear some so, questions. Um, okay, so a few say that there, uh, Nicholas says he's, he's, he's looking um, towards trying his hardest to get a scholarship, but there was a question about scholarships. Okay, so Nicholas also wants to know, do scholarships cover the full thing? And can he get an athletic scholarship outside of the border? So can he get like a scholarship outside of- I love it. Yes. Okay. So it depends. There are different scholarships. Some scholarships will pay a lot of money. Other scholarships pay a little bit amount of money, but that's okay. What is really cool is you can apply for different scholarships. You can apply for multiple. I can tell you that I did that when I went to school. I got multiple scholarships and there are people who will share the same story about how they've applied for multiple scholarships. So you can squirrel all your money together to help pay for school, okay? Now, as for the athletes, absolutely. Lots of athletes go south of the border to the US. We call it NAA, what, and, and I wanna say NAACP, but that's not right. <laughs> I forgot the acronym right now for the US, you know, um, college, they call them colleges, you know, and they don't call them universities, colleges, but uh, same thing you can go down south of the border and play whatever sport, okay? So there are some sports that are more competitive than others. So, you know, you really have to work as, on building your skills. But if you love things like, like volleyball may not be as competitive as soccer, okay? Or rowing may not be as competitive as football, okay? So you can choose different sports that you're really good at and you can get scholarships that will pay everything. We call it a full ride, which is what I want for all of you guys to get a full ride. But those athletes, I really need to stress that you're not just athletes, you are student 
athletes. So you are going to school to learn, not just to play ball. You're going to learn so that when you finish your ball career, because maybe you will be like the first gentleman that we saw from Ghana who's playing soccer, right? Maybe you'll do that professionally, but maybe you won't. So you want to make sure that you've got your education so you can step out in excellence and with your purpose, okay? So yeah, I love the question about the scholarship. Yes. Oh, Mickey has a question. Just one Let's second. hear Mickey. Leif had a question just because um, he's asked a few times. Does okay. the boss get the money? But I'm not sure what your question means. Well, who's the, which boss are you talking about? Like your work? <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Ask the question again. Yes. Ask, be clear. Please. Let's hear Mickey's question while we wait for him to retype that question. Please. What's your question? Why are you in school? Um, um, <laughs> Okay, so we'll wait for Mickey to remember her question to read. Okay. So I want to share a few more ideas with you guys, okay, about how you can also pay for school. We talked about scholarships, right? We talked about, um, I, I was saying too, I was going to tell you that you can go to school internationally. There are schools in Europe, for example, where the government makes school very cheap. You can take advantage of that. So I encourage you to keep your options open. When you decide you want to do a certain program, consider co-op programs because you get to go to work while you're in school. So if you want to be an engineer, you want to be an architect, you want to be in media, some of these programs have something called co-op, where one year or maybe a certain period of time during your school year, you get to work, which is great. That helps to give money. When we talk about working, you can work when you're going to school. I wouldn't encourage while you're in school to work. I would encourage you to do it in the summertime. So get organized and find a good company that will pay you good money, okay? What in the summer before in between your school terms, that's a great way to get some extra money. We already talked about become, you know, if you got a side hustle, you got a business, you got a gift that you want to share with the world and get paid for it, do it. That helps to save money for school. Okay, so I want to encourage you guys that there are so many ideas for you to get money. And I've got one really cool one that you guys would never have known about. It's called the armed services. Do you know what the armed service is? If you want to be in the Navy, if you want to be in the Army, if you want to be a pilot in the Air Force, those are opportunities as well. Because do you know that the armed services is a community in and of itself? The armed services, they need to, they live all on their own on a base and they need doctors, they need lawyers, they need dentists, they need physiotherapists, they need optometrists, okay? They need musicians. They need people who will share with the media what's going on with the armed services. There are so many jobs. They need engineers to help fix their planes or their boats. They need computer people. So I want to plant that, uh, that seed as an opportunity because guess what? If you get into that, then they will pay for you to go to school for free. And you work for them so they will pay you to work. And when you finish, they'll pay you to continue to work for a period of time because you do need to, because they've invested in you, you do need to work a little bit, okay? And then afterwards, you don't have to stay, you can go back into private life. So I love to plant that seed because so many people don't know that they could have done that. And there are famous people who have done that, okay? So that's another idea. Any other questions? Yes. <laughs> um, Valerie would like to know, why does the annual cost of university um, cost more than college? Very good question. Because university, some of the programs are a bit more demanding, requiring more resources. Um, whereas college may be, you know, maybe less in, intensive in terms of the theoretical stuff that's required. Okay. So yeah, you know, I mean, it really depends on, on the program that you want. You can imagine the kind of schooling that a doctor needs versus the schooling for, let's say, a paramedic. OK, there is a significant difference. So that's the thing that really distinguishes the program. But don't make your choice based on the cost of the program. Make the choice on your purpose. What is it that is wrapped up inside of you that you are to share with the world? And you get the schooling that helps you to step out in excellence in your purpose. OK, 
Okay, one more questions. Thing. Yes, and then I'll let you carry on. With <laughs> it's okay because the thing too because we is, we'll keep going with the questions. Okay, Karen would like to know. So when you are born, do the parents have to contact the government? I guess to start the RESP. Oh my goodness! Good job. People are liking the RESP. I love it. So do you know what? What happens is that the your parents don't have to contact the government about the RESP but your parents do register with the government that you were born, okay? And when they register with the government that you were born, there are a few documents that they get. They get a birth certificate that proves that you were born here. That's if you were born here. Um, it, they will get a social insurance number. Remember I said that's a special number that is unique to you. You'll get that. You also get a health card right? So that your parents can take you to the doctor and they don't have to pay for it. Then you also get registered for this really awesome program called a Canada Child Benefit, which gives your parents some extra money to help help raise you. And then they also get some tips on where they can go to open an RESP. So they can do that when they register your birth with the government. But to open an RESP, they just go to any of these institutions. They will give your social insurance number and once they do all of that, and your parents have to have social insurance numbers too, but when they do all of that and register it with the government, the government knows that they owe you some money. Anytime your parents save, they owe you some money. That's what we want. Okay. Nice. I think like, you know, I, I think let's just, uh, just spend time just answering some questions. Cause this is pretty much everything I wanted to chat about. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> cause, um, cause... Uh, okay. So. Let me go back. While you go back and look at the questions, I do have another quick tip. Now, this tip in on top of the RESP, it's not, remember I talked about things like getting scholarships and, and you know, considering international school, schools and co-op and getting good part-time jobs. There is a program called Ontario Student Assistance Program, and that's student loans here in Ontario. For those of our, our um, kids who are from Ontario, it's a program here on, in Ontario. It has two things in it. It's got a loan component and it has a grant component. I don't know how much you would get in either of those. You just have to apply. And they've got a whole bunch of criteria to apply. I encourage you, if you are eligible, go ahead and apply. But don't use the loan portion, only use the grant portion. Because the grant portion, you don't have to pay back. Grant is government money you don't have to pay back. Loan, you do have to pay back. So it's another idea to take advantage of some government money if you're eligible. Eligible. Okay, so that's something you do when you're ready to go to, to post secondary. Nice. Found a question? I did. Um, what, uh, sorry, Anne wants to know what happens if your parents die when you're young? Oh my goodness. I am. So, uh, that is a sad question. That is a sad question. And I'm okay, sorry. I don't, I don't want you to think too much about that, but you know, the thing is what is so good that parents can do uh, to protect against the unexpected is create a hedge. I like to call it like a fence, okay? A financial protection around your family. And we call the tools, those tools that were that fence insurance. And if your parents do something like that, don't you worry. The insurance company will take care of what you need, okay? So that is a really important thing though that parents should put in, pl in place, this financial hedge of protection called insurance. We call that life insurance. But aside from that, my dear, let's not spend time worrying about that. You think about how awesome it is having your parents with you, the amazing things that they do, and the amazing things that you are going to do with your purpose, okay? I think that that's it. Okay, sorry. What happens if you live somewhere poor and that doesn't have an RESP? Um, what happens if you can't save for an I see, I see. So this is where, you know, those strategies that I was talking about, where if you're the country, one, if the country doesn't have a program like this, and, um, you know, your parents aren't able to save at all, then you have to consider how you can help yourself. So study hard, 
okay? Take advantage of your gifts. Take advantage of things like scholarships because schools all around the world will pay smart students to come to their school. They will pay student athletes to come to their school. They will pay student artists to come to their school. So make sure that you focus on your gifts and work hard at your gifts. Work in excellence for your gifts. And don't you worry, everything else will be taken care of, but just step out in excellence, okay? And you can pursue things like scholarships. And remember I talked about going to school internationally. There are schools that are very cheap in comparison to other countries. So you can look at that as well, okay? Any other questions? I saw Mickey, you've got a question. Um, does, a, does a school pay you how, for how long you stay in school? So does the school pay for your entire time while you're in school? That's an awesome question. It is a very good question. Yes, Ben, that is an excellent question. So it depends, okay? So you can get scholarships from schools, but there are companies that will also give money to kids to go to school. So some companies will just give you a lump sum that you can use right away, okay? When you get scholarships from schools, sometimes they will give it to you all at once. Other schools will give you a part for each year and you need to keep qualifying each year. We call those renewable. So you do really good in year one or you really well, let's use proper grammar. You do really well in year one, then you let them know your marks and they say, okay, we will pay for year two. You do really well in year two, you show them your marks and say, okay, we'll pay for year three. So some schools will spread it out over time, but they wanna make sure that you stay diligent, okay? And for athletes, you got to keep your marks up too, because some schools, if your marks aren't good, they will send you back home or they will take away your athletic scholarship. And then you got to pay for school yourself. And if you don't have good marks to qualify you for academic scholarships, you have to go home. And that's happened to a lot of student athletes who didn't consider themselves student athletes. They just thought themselves as athletes who happened to go to school. No, you are a student athlete. So I can't stress that enough. Okay. Awesome. I think that's it for the question. Oh my gosh, that is so great. I think it was good. There were lots of questions and answers. So this was really good. Awesome. So we're almost. So let me stop time. my share. Yes, we are at, almost out of time today. I'm going to do a wrap up. Thank you, Miss. Oh, Joy, you have a question. And Layla, uh, Layla you said you had a question, but you got to type your question in the chat box, okay? Hopefully, we'll get to it before the end. We are going to wrap up. Sorry, Mickey, you had one last question. Okay, sorry, Mickey has one last question. Let's hear. When they when they pay the the money that the school pays you, um, this when the school pays you and you don't and you don't have good marks, do you use that money to pay them back? Do you have to pay back any scholarship money if? you are not able to complete your program. right right yeah typically no from what i understand i don't think they would make you pay back but you definitely won't get money for the next year so then it would be hard for you to stay at the school if you don't have something else to contribute like have strong marks that they will pay you to go to school because you're such a strong student and speaking on that i know we got to wrap up but i saw nicholas question and nicholas yes i encourage you to consider yourself a student first athlete second. So focus on doing well at school because even as an athlete, you will not be an athlete for a long time. Athletics is for young, healthy bodies. After a certain point, you're going to have to get into the workforce and doing something and you're going to need your, your, uh, your schooling in whatever gift that is to help you. Okay. All right. All right. Thank you, Ms. Billy Jane. That was You're welcome. Day. We learned so much. <laughs> Awesome. So I'm just going to finish up by sharing my screen, but you okay. know what, before I do, because I didn't get a chance to do roll call and I missed that this week. So let's do roll call and you guys put in the chat, which country you guys are joining from, from today, because I know that we did talk a lot about Canada, but let's see, do we have anybody outside of Canada? We have Canada, Canada, God, hey, let's see. Canada. Nicholas, Canada, Canada, freezing land. Joy says freezing land. England, yes. From England. Jupiter. Yay! Do we have anybody from Germany today? I've seen a lot of Germany in the chat. Um, I, I know I'm 
Let's see, Layla's from Canada. Mickey, where are you from? The sea. <laughs> Mickey's from the sea. <laughs> <laughs> Joshua is from Canada. Rain is from Canada. Canada, Gabriel. All right, Canada's repping today. Yes, Yay. we're killing it. Yay. Yay. All Canadian right. gang. Yes, Valerie. <laughs> Yay. All right. Okay. So let's wrap up because it's almost time to get going today. Final question that I ask on every Kidonomics webinar, what would happen if kids become more financially literate? And our answer is real change impacts the world. Real change that impacts the world. And why do we think that? Because guess what? The more financially literate you become, the more healthy and better choices that you'll be able to make. Just like you learned today all about scholarships and RESPs and grants to help fuel your passion and your dreams as you get older, right? So now that you guys know about all these things, I seen in the chat how you guys were saying, oh my gosh, I'm going to like work really hard in school so that I can become what I want to be, right? Because you guys know there's other options and the, the smarter that you become in financial literacy, the better the outcome that you will have, right? So that's what we're super excited about. So we call you on Kittynomics. We'd love to say that you guys are our Young Financial Literacy Ambassadors. Yay! So what is an ambassador? An ambassador is an authorized messenger or representative. So you guys are authorized out there to share the information that you learn on Kittynomics because what nice. you share, sorry, the information that you know and that you share it out there to your family and to your friends and to your community at large, guess what? It will help make them more financially literate. And you guys will have such a huge impact on maybe somebody else's life that you educate them and tell them all about RESPs and how they can feel their passions, right? You don't know what you tell them can help change their world. That would be amazing. So we like to say that knowledge is, is our superpower. superpower. Share, share it. it. Oh. Yay. Yay. <laughs> all right. So here is the schedule coming up for the rest of February. I've had a few questions on um, like our schedule and where do I post it? So I'm going to start posting our schedule on our social media channel so that you guys can see some of the, the uh, webinars that are coming up for the rest of uh, February and March. Because I tell you guys every single week on every webinar, um, but you'd have to watch the webinar. So I'm going to share it now on our social media channel so you guys can prepare ahead to know what webinars are coming up. So next week is with Miss Jane. She will be back on February 19th. And we're going to talk about positive mindset at work. So we talked about, you know, how to write a resume. We've talked about um, how to uh, dress properly. Yeah, how to dress properly. So how to prepare for an interview. So now that you've gotten the job, how do you show up at work, right? So if that, so we're going to talk about that. And then, of course, the end of February, we will have back Miss Hadriana Leo back on Kittynomics. Also, we love her. We love Miss Jane. Uh, we're going to talk about good credit. Right? How to establish credit, how to build credit, what is good credit? This is a really, really important topic because credit is like the one of the pillars of financial literacy. So I really want you guys to stay engaged on that one. But for every kid economics webinar, I feel is super important. Okay. But we do have a couple of special ones coming up on Kidonomics. So we have Dr. Jill Andrew. She's the MPP for Toronto, and she's coming up on Kidonomics on March the 12th. So this is going to be a different style of Kidonomics. Miss Jill Andrew, we're going to have more of an interview style with her. So it's not going to be more of a presentation style. It's going to be more of an interview, but we need to have the questions that we would like to ask her um, ahead of time. So I would like you guys to please send me some questions on what you may have for our leaders, our political leaders. What do you want to know? Some questions. You guys had some really insightful questions like what tactics are we going to have um, in the future to help prepare you to pay for your, your education, right? We can ask Miss Jill that question because the government plays a really important role in that. 
So these are the types of questions that I would love for you guys to ask. So I would like you to please send me an email at kittynomics101 at gmail.com. And just let me know some questions that you will have for Miss Jill, Andrew, and that would be awesome. And then we also have, I'm super excited. I didn't um, put the picture up, so I'll have her next week. We have Miss Marcy Ian, formerly of The Social. So she's the co-host of The Social. She used to be, but now she's the MP for the Liberal Party for a riding in Toronto. And she's going to be on Kittynomics. And we're going to talk about the power of pivoting. And that's going to be a really awesome Kittynomics. We're so looking forward to having Miss Marcy Ian on Kittynomics. So you guys can see we have some fabulous guests coming up on Kittynomics, so stay tuned. All right, last slide. <laughs> I feel like I was talking a lot. Listen, I want to hear from you ambassadors. We want to know, we want to know what you what you want to talk about. I get, I get your parents and sometimes you guys tell me, okay, you know what, we really love to learn about this topic. And then I take that and I will find an expert to come on Kittynomics and talk about um whatever it is that you had mentioned so a couple of you guys had mentioned that you wanted to talk more about politics so as you guys can see we have politicians coming on kittynomics so you tell me what is it that you want to learn more of of course relating to financial literacy um but tell me what do you want to learn more of so send me an email at kittynomics 101 or you can always reach me on our social media handles which are oh instagram twitter facebook youtube and tiktok and TikTok, right? So all of our handles are Kittynomics. You can send me a message on all of that, on all any one of those, but please, 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 please. If you see one of our social media handles, can you please like and follow us? Um, we would love the support. We do this for you guys because we want you guys to get educated and we love that. So if you do like our content and you do feel that it is super beneficial and you guys are learning, please like and follow us on all of our social media handles. We would love that you do. Before I wrap up, I'm just going to go back into the chat because sometimes I forget this part. Okay, everybody's saying bye. Okay, so <laughs> do you have any questions? Awesome. All right, so we'd like to thank everybody for joining this week. Thank you, Miss Billy Jane. We love you for coming back on Kittynomics. We love you, love you, love you for the information that you shared with us today. And then all we have to say is bye. bye. <laughs> See you next week. <laughs> Stop my screen.